This video is a compilation of like what, four different recipes, a baked potato, cream spinach, mashed potato, and steak. The prime rib hash from Keen's. I'm calling it a steakhouse hash. You can only get it at the bar at Keen's, my favorite steakhouse in all of New York. You can take your leftovers and give them a second life in this hash or get all the little elements and make this. We're gonna do our baked potato first. I've scrubbed my rusted potato clean. However you guys wanna do your baked potato at home is totally fine. My dad used to just like microwave potatoes for us when we were kids and that was our baked potato, which obviously is not a big potato at all, it's a microwave potato. I usually bake it at 425 degrees for about an hour. I drizzled a little bit of oil on it and a little bit of salt on the outside. This is gonna go in the oven. So back in the day, I remember like my, when my best friend Jane got married, the thing that everyone like was so trendy about doing was mashed potato bars at these weddings. It was like, and actually they put them in like little martini glasses and put the mashed potatoes in the martini glass and then top it with your cheese and your bacon, all that stuff. It was such a weird trend in glasses like this. Anyways, Sicily, cause if you're not having a martini at a steakhouse, what are you even doing with your life? So cheers. This is obviously just water in case it wasn't obvious. <laughs> because it's early in the morning and I'm not having a martini right now, but I will have one later, okay? On to making our mashed potatoes. What I find makes the nicest, creamiest, butteriest mash are Yukon Gold potatoes. This is the old russet Idaho, and this is the Yukon Gold. The russets are gonna be starchier potatoes. They're really good for baking. The thing about a russet is that it does absorb a lot of water, so they don't really make ideal candidates for mashed potatoes because obviously with mashed potatoes, you're boiling your potatoes. But if you want the best mashed potatoes, the butteriest mashed potatoes, I recommend using Yukon Golds. Cut them all roughly the same size because you want them all to boil and to cook at the same speed. I like to do about one inch pieces and then cover them with cold water and bring it to a boil. I'm also gonna season my water with a bunch of salt because we do want the potatoes as they're cooking to absorb some flavor. So, water into this with a little bit of salt. Remove my martini out of the way. Sicily, by the way. But dirty gin martini, it's like dinner and a drink in one. If you get the right, you know, the olives in there, always ask for an extra olive. That's my biggest tip, okay? All right, so we are now going to prep up some cream spinach. Now, Keens does not put cream spinach into their hash, okay? So this recipe actually, the way it kind of started of me replicating it even, was I was with some of my girlfriends. We had like whole steakhouse dinner. We were like, let's get dressed up. And we did like a murder mystery night. And part of it was that we did a prime rib, we did mashed potatoes, we did cream spinach, all the things, and we had all these leftovers in the morning. And we were like, let's make prime rib hash. Because we had the cream spinach, we were like, well, let's throw that in there as well. Um, so that's how I decided to add that, because I don't know what your order is when you go to a steakhouse, but I'm always gonna obviously get a steak. I want mashed potatoes and I want cream spinach. Like that is my ideal. Oh, obviously also a wedge salad. If you're not getting the wedge salad, you're, I mean, come on. Come on guys, get a wedge salad, get the martini, the cream spinach, the mashed potatoes, the steak, it's gonna be great, you won't regret it. But cream spinach is one of those things, it's... Hold on a second. The light just went out. I'm sure it's great. Anyways, cream spinach is such a good thing. I mean, I, I love to make it at like Thanksgiving now. It's one of my favorite dishes to have. You guys know me and you know that I'm a deep down a very trashy person. And I love Velveeta in my cream spinach and cream cheese. So like, you're welcome world for this. I'm using frozen spinach that I've defrosted and then you're just gonna squeeze out all the liquid. Let's go cook that back here. Like so spinach, when I was a kid, spinach was my favorite vegetable. And I, and it was because of Popeye. I used to like have this trick, which is so stupid. And God bless my parents for thinking I was funny and laughing at me and humoring me, where I would eat my spinach and I like, I would put up my muscle, I would push it up and I'd be like, ate my spinach. Like what a dork. Like I was such an, I'm still a dork. So whatever, it's fine. I acknowledge that. Okay, we're gonna heat up our pan. We're gonna melt some butter in there. Nice and sizzling. So we're just gonna soften our shallot in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. And we're gonna add in our frozen defrosted spinach. At this stage, if you were using fresh spinach, you would cook it down until it was completely cooked and then drain out all the liquid. 
add the drained fresh spinach back into here and continue with the recipe. My mom always had one of those like bricks of Velveeta in our fridge. And for you, Teresa, I salute you. Cream cheese. And you're just gonna turn this down a little bit and let those just melt. You could put a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg in there. And don't forget your martini. Mmm. Honestly, when I go to a steakhouse, I don't, this is, a, don't use this. I don't care about the meat. I go because I really want the sides. I want the wedge salad. I want the cream spinach. I want the mashed potatoes. I'll share a steak with somebody. Like, I don't care. I really don't want the sides. Interesting. You can use that if you want, I guess. My dirty little secret's out. We'll turn it off. Let's taste it and season it. Mmm. It's so cheesy and good. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of black pepper in it, a little pinch of salt, mix it up. Like, look at this. You can't tell me that's not like, just the most delicious looking thing ever. Our potatoes are coming to a boil. I'm gonna set a timer for about 12 minutes and then we'll check on them. Meanwhile, let's deal with our steak. Something you guys should know about Keen's, it's like a very old school vibe. It's like dark and kind of has that like, just kind of like comfort to it to me. It's also has the largest collection of church warden pipes. The whole ceiling is just covered in pipes. I think that you had to be a member to join and it's got over 90,000 pipes. So some of the pipes or people who are members were people like Teddy Roosevelt, Albert Einstein, Babe Ruth, Will Rogers. Like it's such a crazy history. And I think that the history of Keynes is one of the things that really like speaks out to me as well and why I love going there. I know that at Keen's, it's the prime rib hash. We're just making a ribeye, but you can use any meat you want in this. You can make it vegetarian and not use any. Starting with the steak, I took it out to room temperature over an hour ago, and I seasoned it all over with salt. Something a lot of people do also is season it and put it on like a rack the night before and let it in the fridge air dry and season it then as well. The salt is gonna penetrate and really flavor the meat nicely. You could do that if you have the time, but I think just taking out your steak at least an hour before and salting it is the way to go. We have our pan on medium high. Just gonna put like a neutral oil in my pan and we're gonna sear it. Make sure this is like piping hot. It's kind of smoking. All right, so right on in. I'm gonna keep it on one side for a certain amount of time and then I'll flip it and then I might I might flip it back and forth. Who knows? See how I'm feeling, okay? Oh yeah. Steak is looking good. I'm going to flip it. Potatoes are done. So a knife is easily inserted into them and I'm gonna drain them. Now with a steak like this that's really thick, if you need to like pop it in the oven to finish it, kind of be the judge of that, but I always recommend having a temperature probe. I'm gonna undercook my steak a little bit because I'm gonna cut it up, up into cubes and then I'm gonna toss it into my hash. So I don't want it to be like super well done or anything like that. So I'm gonna take it off right now, all right? Okay. Hold well, on, let me turn this off again. It's fine. Okay, so mashed potatoes. If you have one of these guys, you can just mash them like this. What I want to do though, is I'm gonna put them through a ricer. With a ricer, it just comes out a lot smoother. You know, I, I want a really creamy mash. Even though I'm only gonna put this in a hash, it doesn't matter, I can do what I want. We did about two pounds of potatoes, and then you can make this as creamy and as buttery and delicious as you want, essentially. I'm gonna add in probably about, look at that. Ugh about eight tablespoons of butter or so, and maybe three quarters a cup of milk. It's like a kind of standard recipe I like to go with, but all the potatoes are different. And like, honestly, some potatoes, it depends on the starchiness of them. Add your butter and your milk or your liquid a little bit at a time, just so you ensure you don't come up with like potato soup. We're gonna put this on like a medium kind of heat. We added in our, <laughs> we added in our butter and our milk and it's looking really good. It's nice and creamy. And our baked potato is done now. Beautiful. So we're gonna take an onion, brown it. We're gonna mix all these things together and make like big old potato cakes, potato hash cakes, whatever you wanna call it. Top it with an egg, eat it with some hot sauce. Pretend like you're sitting at the bar at Keen's on a Friday late afternoon, early evening. It's pretty good. Roughly chop this guy. You can make it, it doesn't matter, just like nice little biddly boop. And we are going to 
cut up our baked potato as well, and we're gonna just brown those, and then we're gonna add it to a bowl with the steak. We'll cut up some steak. Look at that, nice little baked potato. We'll add um, some cubes of steak, we'll add the mashed potatoes. The cool thing about this recipe is that you're kind of throwing in all your leftovers from the fridge. The key to this hash recipe, by the way, is using this nonstick, because from here on out, we're gonna cook everything in this little nonstick skillet right here, okay? Getting this going. Season it, as always. What we're doing is just like softening this and also getting a little bit of color on it, okay? Meanwhile, I've just been sitting here eating all the cream spinach and mashed potatoes. It's just so good. Mm. Nicely browned onions. We're gonna pop this into our bowl over here, add a little bit more oil, and we're gonna add these potatoes. I'll season them a little bit. And we're just looking for color on this. So while our potatoes get some color, I'm just gonna cut up this steak over here. Look at that steak, it's cooked. It's just the perfection, to be honest. I just wanna eat this like gnaw on it right now. I'm gonna do that, but I won't. All right, we're gonna cut her up into little cubes. All of this is just gonna be like bite-sized pieces. Mmm, that's good. Save that bone and gnaw on it later, once the cameras are off. So now, it's a matter of adding in all of our little pieces for this. I've got around a cup of cream spinach, my leftover cream spinach. It's good when all this stuff is cold already. So we're gonna add this right on in. Oh yeah, look at that. And then we're gonna add in also about a cup's worth of mashed potatoes. Oh yeah, and then look at our potatoes. Getting nice, good golden color on it. See all those nice little crispy bits? That's what we're looking for. That's gonna add texture to this hash. And they're still hot, that's fine. We can add them in while they're hot right now. Mix this all up really nice and good. This is decadent. We're gonna cook it over like medium high. Now we're gonna add our hash right in there. Usually I divide in the half and make two big ones and kind of mush it in there to make like this little kind of cake. It's all kind of in there sizzling. We got it on like medium-ish heat. And then the moment of truth comes when I flip it with one hand, okay? One, two, ooh yeah. And don't forget, this is all already cooked. So all you're looking for right now is a bit of color on each side and warming it through. Where's my martini? Okay, this is looking good. I'm gonna cook up my egg now. Wipe out any of the excess. I'm just gonna do an oil fried egg. This is beautiful. Have you ever seen anything so lovely before in all your life? I mean, I like to eat it with my martini and some hot sauce, preferably like a vinegary hot sauce. This is like a big bite of steak right here. Mm. How can you take your most romantic, amazing, perfect night out at an amazing steakhouse and then take those leftovers and have it again the next day, but better? Like this. This is my love letter to Keens, basically. Oh, I love you, I miss you, I'll be back there soon. In the meantime, I'm just gonna keep making this and eating this and pretending that I'm sitting at that bar watching all the finance bros come in and getting sloshed and I'll just be getting sloshed and eating this, basically. Just over here, not on the bone.